Tony Harrison says, if I'm Lubin, I'm thinking about retiring. He showed a lot of grit, though. Yeah. Let's talk. Push the weight in the flex. Flex. The live is one in the six. Hey. Fit the runner, boy, you nigga, no question. Yo. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Yo. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Motherfucker never learned your lesson. Right. Hey. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Uh, 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 I mean, they walk and drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Tony Harrison says, if I'm Lubin, I'm thinking about retiring. He showed so much grit. I salute him. And, and salute to Tony. He had an outstanding performance, man. I, I think he stole the show. That was boxing at his finest. But let's talk about what he said about, uh, about Erickson Lubin. First of all, I'm looking at this picture. And uh, I mean, this is what the sport is at times. And um, you already know how I feel. It didn't have to be that way. Um, I think Lubison did not listen to his corner. Uh, he fought a bad fight. There was a lot of things going on. I spoke about it on my live earlier. There was a lot of things going on in that corner that I didn't like. And um, see that ref right there on the right? That's uh, Mr. Russell Mora. Russell Mora. Russell Mora. Google him. I did a video about him. And um, <laughs> you just go ahead and uh, take it from there. There was a lot of things that was a little fugazi this night, but let's just focus on what Harrison said, you know. Um, says he had a ringside seat. Oh, uh, this is from Boxing Scene. Link will be in the description. He had a ringside seat Saturday night, one of the more brutal boxing matches you could witness in person. The former WBC super welterweight champion came away from it more impressed with Erickson Lubin than ever. He still wondered whether Lubin should continue his career after absorbing that type of damage to his face during the technical knockout loss to Sebastian Fundora in their fantastic fight for the WBC Interim Super Welterweight Championship. Lubin, only 26 years old, suffered a broken nose, a separated right shoulder. That'll uh, require surgery. Damn. The swelling between the uh, and around his eyes made an uh, unbelievably brave southpaw unrecognizable to Harrison and uh, most uh, most everyone else who watched uh, starting in the sixth round. I mean, this, you know what? All right, all right, all right. Look, just, just if you haven't seen the fight, go ahead and watch it. But like I said, there was a lot of things going on that I didn't understand. You know, Ruben wasn't listening to his corner. His corner looked incompetent at times. It was one part, I forget which round, but he, uh, I think... Uh, Cunningham asked to put water on his head. And one of those dudes started like squirting an, an empty bottle over his head. And then they had to get another bottle. And I'm, I'm looking at that like, what the hell? How do you not know that there's no water in that bottle? What is going on in that corner? But it was downhill from there. It was just, it was just all bad. And then you find out things like there was no drug testing, just a lot of stuff surrounding this thing. And if you want to entertain it, fine. You know, I'm just. All right, fine. We're just we're just looking at it for what it is, right? F right, fine. Uh, he says, "Man, listen." Uh, this is Tony Harrison talking. He says, "After this fight, if I'm Lubin, I'm thinking about retiring." Harrison told Boxing Scene. He said, "You know what I mean? That's a tough fight. Uh, that's a, that's a tough out. Uh, you don't even recognize him for real. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he' gonna be sore in the morning, and ain't nobody gonna sit with that man but his team." This sport doesn't give a F about you. <laughs> don't give a F about you. Don't give a F about the supporters. Don't give a F about anything. That's just me talking, though. But back to the article. Lubin and Fandora showed huge hearts in an undeniable fight of the year candidate uh, um, that ended when Kevin Cunningham, Lubin's trainer, instructed the referee, Russell Mora, to halt the, uh, the sustained action after the ninth round uh, in Las Vegas, whatever. By then, Lubin and Fondora had recovered from knockdowns because Lubin came back and knocked down Fondora. Uh, it was all ugly. Uh, Harrison said it was a hell of a fight. It just lets you know that boxing is the toughest sport in the world. Uh, look, man, he said, Lubin showed so much grit to me tonight. The man showed me so much dog. And I really haven't been uh, uh, seeing that from him. To push forward the way he was pushing forward. 
after being uh, knocked down. I salute the man. I just salute him. And, and salute to you, Tony Harrison, man. And the link will be in the description. Uh, that's Tony Harrison's uh, take on it. Y'all already know my take on it. Um, again, um, I don't know what was going on. And I'm looking at this picture. I just feel, I can't help but to feel bad for Erickson. But I don't know what's going on. What was going on that night. Um, round one, he fought very, very well. Um, round two, he was fighting well until he decided to fight in the pocket. And you would think a guy like Fundora, who's all of what, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, he could hit you from across the damn ring. Um, but he doesn't like doing that. He likes to fight on the inside. And this guy could be out box. For those of you that don't remember, um, Fundora just fought Garcia, who fought Tony Harrison last night. And um, I mean, a Saturday night. And Garcia couldn't find Tony Harrison worth a damn. He was frustrated and he was swinging for the fences, couldn't land anything. But then you 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 turn that around and, and he fought Fondora and they fought in the pocket and, and Garcia was giving him hell. He didn't do enough to win, but he was never in any trouble like Erickson Lubin. Then he fights this kid on the inside. And you're getting hit with uppercuts from the taller guy. Get lower. Make him reach down. Turn him. And that was another thing he wasn't doing. Kevin told him, turn him. The left hook is there. Eventually, he landed it, and it got Fondora in trouble, and he had to, he knocked him down or took a strategic knee, whatever it was. He dropped him in that round. It was a 10-8 round. But come on, man. I don't know what was going on with him. Was it registering? Did, was he concussed after the, the first knockdown? Did he hear what his what his what his, what his trainer was saying? Because that happens. I'm not going to be surprised if they talk to Erickson Lubin and he'll say something crazy like, "Yo, I don't remember anything past the first knockdown. I was just fighting off an instinct." That happens, man. But whatever, man. I mean, but oh, um, retirement at 26. Look, I don't know. I don't know. But after this fight, what can he do? This was supposed to be the fight that'll say, okay, look, do you get the Castano, uh, Jamel Charlo winner? If Castano wins, do you get a shot? If Jamel wins, do you get your you get your rematch? You didn't like how that ended either. No one liked it. For those of you that support you, you know, I mean, I thought it was gonna be a, a, a I thought it was gonna be a longer fight than that. You know what I mean? Um, so. Where does he go from here? Does he hang around at 154? Does he wait for Bud and Errol? I mean, what does he do? Because everyone's going to see this picture. Everyone's going to remember remember this. And whoever beats him now, they're going to say he's damaged goods. Is he is this early in his, career, in his career? Is he a gatekeeper now? I don't know, man. So it's up to him. I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know. I have no idea. Y'all let me know what y'all think. What can he do moving forward? I don't know. Because this was bad. This was awful. And, and I'm glad to see him. He came back and knocked him down. He didn't quit. The corner quit. But heart will take you but so far in this sport, man. At, at some point, you got to look at safety. He got a broken jaw, dislocated shoulder that 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 needs surgery. And I don't know what's going on with his eye socket. It's just bad. But salute to Erickson Lubin. He did show a lot of heart, man. And we have to consider what Tony Harrison is saying. Well, he he may have to consider it. But whatever the brother decides to do, I'll support it. But I just, what I do want is for him to be safe. Y'all let me know what you think. Bronx on deck. Move!